Uh, this morning I'm going to talk about uh, the work that we are doing with all the partners, uh, notably in arm break response uh, for uh, diseases and also uh, research development. Um, my talk will be divided in two. I'm going to explain uh, the work that is being done uh, in a daily basis uh, with a country-based approach and a one health approach. And my, the second part of my talk is going to discuss how we are going to do better research and development tomorrow together with all the partners and why we need to have also, as the first speaker mentioned, uh, the country at the center of the agenda. Um, so why frontline workers are so important, as was mentioned in the talk of uh, the first speaker, and maybe many of us have already forgotten how uh, difficult was the Ebola crisis in 2014, and how unprepared was uh, not only um, international organization, but more importantly, the countries themselves. So there have been a lot of lesson learned exercise uh, many of them, by the way, in Western countries, uh, in the North. Uh, but the real, for us at WHO, the real take-home message was uh, of this uh, crisis was the need to have health district authorities in at-risk area ready to quickly implement health measures for control. We should not wait uh, the international bodies to come and fix the problem, again, as the first speaker was saying, we need to increase the capacity at the district level so that people know what to do in the very first moment of an Ebola outbreak. Uh, so, uh, outbreak of emerging infectious disease was described yesterday by different speakers, and they tend to be at what we call the interface between wildlife, uh, domestic animal. Uh, many times uh, uh, the disease is amplified by domestic animal outbreaks. Could be H1N1, could be MERS coronavirus, could be Rift Valley fever, and then you have uh, human cases. And why it's so important to go at the country level and to help stop this outbreak? It's because, of course, if we don't stop the first outbreak in Gekedu, Guinea, then it's spread to Sierra Leone, then it's spread to Liberia, and you have the crisis that we have been seeing, for example, with Ebola, but that was also the case for SARS uh, in 2003. Again, um, to control outbreaks is not just an issue of uh, epidemiologists and laboratory people counting cases and deaths. It's also the work of veterinarians, the work of clinicians, the work of logisticians, the, world, uh, the work of a uh, burial team, uh, many, uh, very often uh, managed by the, the Red Cross uh, local authorities. Uh, this kind of uh, 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 slide uh, represents the way we are coordinating the different teams. And I was presenting this slide uh, during an outbreak of Rivali fever in Madagascar some years ago to explain how we can integrate the way we are working. And somebody, sorry, somebody from the Ministry of Agriculture was asking me, where is the Ministry of Agriculture? Okay, and uh, so there is no a place for the Ministry of Health or a place for the Ministry of Agriculture or a place for the NGO. This is an integrated strategy where we all work on epidemiology, we all work to ensure that logistics are there, we all work to ensure that we have community participation and we are sending the same message uh, to them. Uh, this strategy was uh, developed further together with OIE, FAO, and the uh, affected countries by Rift Valley Fever, which is uh, a disease affecting mainly uh, animals, and notably in uh, East Africa and Southern Africa, but also in Sudan, and there was outbreaks in, in the past in Egypt and uh, Saudi Arabia. Um, today, with Rift Valley Fever, we have, in addition, the ability to forecast some of these outbreaks that are occurring every eight, ten years. Uh, and there is a mechanism that we have with the FAO and the OIE. When the, uh, some event, uh, notably El Nino, uh, are coming and uh, we are looking at the uh, climate forecasting, we can 
predict is a bit too much, but we can try to forecast some of this even, which was the case, for example, in 2007, where we asked for intensified surveillance. And you can see that, back to the first slide, uh, for a Rivalli fever, in fact, the disease is coming uh, through mosquitoes biting animals, and you have large arm breaking animals uh, with animal uh, suffering, um, sick, and, and dying, and then you have uh, human cases. And this is a disease mainly, a uh, veterinary disease, I would say, an animal disease, and a disease who are economically very difficult for uh, farmers. Uh, where, in fact, you would, uh, if everything was good in this world, you would, when you know that this uh, outbreak are going to occur in two or three months from now, do a mass animal vaccination so that the disease is not circulating, and then <coughs> you will decrease the number of animal viremic and you will decrease the number of human. But this will be in a perfect world because today, unfortunately, uh, animal vaccines are not totally optimum. There is no program to really uh, create a bank of vaccine to vaccinate West Africa. And uh, FAO and OIE are fighting with country to try to find a solution to this problem. Uh, in terms of, uh, again, helping the people at the uh, feed level, we are, for example, at the moment working on a document that we have been using in West Africa, again, to uh, help the people at the district level so that they know how to prepare, how to detect uh, new cases uh, of Ebola if they come back, uh, and how to control quickly, and this is in French, in English, and in Portuguese. So going to the uh, research and development blueprint, and again, why we need affected countries to be at the core of it. The Ebola response in West Africa, again, a lot of things have been done, but uh, from uh, a research perspective, it was very important that we were able to validate rapid diagnostic tests, but also nucleo nucleic acid tests, six of them. Some of them were used recently in the outbreak in DRC, and they are used in many labs now in Africa to do uh, testing of sample. Um, therapeutics trial were able to be done in the three affected countries with uh, country capacity and with PI from the three countries, Liberia, Sierra Leone, uh, and Guinea. And you see yesterday the presentation from uh, Anne Bess from Merck about the vaccine trial. Uh, so this success in terms of how we have been able to do research in the field for the affected population and for the country should be repeated and we have a program called the Research and Development Blueprint and one of the prim principles is really to have the affected country at the core of it. And for example, this is another disease called uh, Crimean Congo Emergic Fever where there is a transmission on ticks human and infected, and then there is a secondary transmission. And uh, notably, this disease occurs in the Middle East and in Euro. Uh, and what we are trying these days is to work with the different hospitals that you have on this map, so that we are uh, working with this hospital, training the laboratory people there so that they can validate uh, diagnostics for CCHF. And the people who are the clinicians of the different hospitals, they are connected together. They are uh, developing protocol for clinical trial to try to discover new therapeutics that would work uh, to combat CCF, which is hyper endemic in this country. And the objective would be, again, to have a point of care diagnostic, uh, to have uh, a better uh, therapeutics. And we are even thinking about boosting, in fact, anti tick animal vaccine, because uh, human vaccine are going to be complicated to put in place. Uh, we are uh, reporting only 2,000 cases of CCHF globally today. So we are going more for an animal vaccine. And so it's, again, a, a one else approach to a, a local problem. So uh, the home take home message, uh, and sorry, maybe I've been very quick, but uh, it takes, uh, we will have more time for the discussion. Again, country capacity is key. But the key point remain high-level government commitment uh, and also international collaboration. Um, I really believe that we need to do more, uh, notably to uh, boost the research and development, 
to have access to new diagnostics, vaccine and therapeutics for the disease like CCHF, Rivalli fever, Lassa fever, who are really a problem for many countries in Africa, in the Middle East or in Asia. And uh, we should continue to um, support the country to apply the, the One Health um, framework, but keeping in mind that One Health is not the monopoly of doctors and veterinarians. Okay, One Health is much more than just uh, two medicines. One Health is the work of uh, social science, the work of communication, is the work of uh, people in charge of uh, hygiene, uh, infection control, um, etc., etc. Thank you for your at attention. <coughs> Thank you, Pierre. <coughs> you say um, we should encourage to um, to apply more One Health, but it's not easy. What would you say is the biggest challenge in Western Africa right now to uh, apply One Health? <coughs> well, uh, it was mentioned by the first speaker. The big challenge uh, is the lack of uh, human resource. So it's true for uh, the human health sector, but it's very true for the veterinary health sector. Um, the last outbreak I was, uh, for example, uh, Rivali fever in South Africa in 2010. Uh, I was in the field uh, discussing with uh, many people and realized that, in fact, uh, at the end of the day, when we talk about how we are going to do the vaccination, etc., with different players, there were, in fact, uh, no vets uh, in the team because many of them have left the country to go uh, in Chile, in Argentina, in Australia where the salary wa was better. And in fact, uh, many countries, as again was said by the first speakers, are facing this problem. Uh, we know the solution, but we need the, hum uh, the, yeah, the human resource. Uh, and it's the same also for the doctors and the nurses in Africa. Many of them also are, are leaving the country, not just the researcher, but also uh, this resource. So there is no one health to talk about before that part is solved, actually. I mean, we can think this is the best way, but still on the ground, St there, there is, is a lot a left to do, there is basic a, things. There is a lot of work to do, yes. And uh, we need to continue to encourage the government so that they invest more in health, research, innovation, and uh, as a priority for, for them, education and health should be a priority in, in, in these countries, yeah. There, w <coughs> there was a tripart agreement between uh, WHO, yep. FIO and OIE, I yes. think, uh, a couple of years ago. Um, uh, has this agreement meant anything for the governments of One Health? This agreement was discussed many times in many international meetings. Um, again, I believe that uh, it's in the field that you can see if there have been progress or not, and um, some progress have happened, uh, but we are not yet there. There is still a lot of work to do, and if tomorrow, let's say in December, we have a, a massive outbreak of Rivali fever in, Est in East Africa, I don't think that uh, the veterinary service from this country are ready to implement the mass vaccination of animal population. S so whose responsibility is this actually? It's to a train new uh, responsibility, <laughs> I would say. I mean, we, we know what to do, but there yeah. are not resources and maybe not uh, yep. interest in somehow, somewhere. It's, it's not a, a lack of interest, it's more, uh, I mean, the government have a lot of things to deal with, and it's always difficult to say to them, you need to be prepared because in three months or in five years from now, we are going to have this problem who is coming only every eight years. And some politician said, um, maybe I will not be there at this moment, so why I will invest? Um, so it happened in many countries. Yeah, but what is the responsibility, for example, from your organization, the WHO yeah. or other big organizations? No, it's always easy to find somebody. I mean, it's a collective responsibility. Yeah. We are trying to encourage the one and the other to do the work that needs to be done. And uh, you can say it's the uh, FAO, IE should do more, but also the country should do more. So we should all do more then. Yeah. Thank you, Pierre. You're welcome. Merci, Merci beaucoup.